Would the congregation please stand and face the back of the church? We'll make our beginning in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In holy baptism, Bonnie K. Burns was clothed with the robe of Christ's righteousness that covered all her sin. St. Paul says, Do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were buried, therefore, with him by baptism into death, in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might walk in newness of life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we shall certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. Together, Psalm 23. 
The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they come to me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O oh God of grace and mercy, we give thanks for your loving kindness shown to Bonnie and to all your servants, who, having finished their course in faith, now rest from their labors. Grant that we also may be faithful unto death and receive the crown of eternal life through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit. One God, now and forever. Please be seated. The Old Testament reading comes from Psalm 103, verses 11 to 19. David writes, For as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is his steadfast love toward those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far does he remove our transgressions from us. As a father shows compassion to his children, so the Lord shows compassion to those who fear him. For he knows our frame. He remembers that we are dust. As for man, his days are like grass. He flourishes like a flower of the field, for the wind passes over it and it is gone, and its place knows it no more. But the steadfast love of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting, on those who fear him, and his righteousness to children's children. To those who keep his covenant and remember to do his commandments, the Lord has established his throne in the heavens, and his kingdom rules over all. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
The epistle comes from 2 Corinthians chapter 4. Paul writes, But we have this treasure in jars of clay to show that the surpassing power belongs to God and not to us. We are afflicted in every way but not crushed, perplexed but not driven to despair, persecuted but not forsaken, struck down but not destroyed, always carrying in the body the death of Jesus, so that the life of Jesus may also be manifested in our bodies. For we who live are always being given over to death for Jesus' sake, so that the life of Jesus also may be manifested in our mortal flesh. So death is at work in us, but life in you. Since we have the same spirit of faith according to what has been written, I believe and so I spoke, we also believe and so we also speak, knowing that he who raised the Lord Jesus will raise us also with Jesus and bring us with you into his presence. For it is all for your sake that as grace extends to more and more people, it may increase thanksgiving to the glory of God. So we do not lose heart, Though our outer nature is wasting away, our inner nature is being renewed day by day. For this slight momentary affliction is preparing for us an eternal weight of glory beyond all comparison, as we look not to the things that are seen, but to the things that are unseen. For the things that are seen are transient, but the things that are unseen are eternal. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand for the reading of the Holy Gospel. Alleluia, alleluia, Jesus Christ is the firstborn of the dead. To him be glory and power forever. Alleluia. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 10th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. He who is a hired hand and not a shepherd, who does not own the sheep, sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and flees, and the wolf snatches them and scatters them. He flees because he has a hired hand and cares nothing for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my own, and my own know me. Just as the Father knows me, and I know the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep. And I have other sheep that are not of this fold. I must bring them also, and they will listen to my voice. So there will be one flock, one shepherd. For this reason the Father loves me, because I lay down my life, that I may take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own. I have authority to lay it down, and I have authority to take it up again. This charge I have received from my Father. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. God has made us his people through our baptism into Christ, living together in trust and hope. We confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, Please be seated. 
unto you from God the Father and from the Lord Jesus, the Good Shepherd, who remembers us, both in his death and in his resurrection, and as he enters into his eternal kingdom, who has placed Bonnie's name in the book of life and has remembered her life in her baptism. May all of you be comforted by that same love that was given to Bonnie that is also for you. And the promise given to her by Jesus is yours also, especially to you, Terry and Kathy, and all the family and friends of Bonnie. Jesus loved Bonnie and still does, and he loves you too. Amen. Bonnie's life centered around a few things, uh, two things in particular that were very important. And at first, they may seem very different, but after a while, you will see that there's a beautiful connection between these two things. Bonnie's life was, of course, spent with family, as it is for most. But she also cared about two other areas of her life. One, the church, and two, genealogy. I had asked uh, Terry and Kathy why they think Bonnie was so interested in that, why she valued it so much, and why it was such a passion. You guys weren't quite sure exactly what it is, other than that she loved it. It was a part of her life, a really important part of her life. In fact, she was a founding member of the Carroll County Genealogical Society and would spend her time out in the cemetery scrubbing off names so that she could figure out who was who um, out there and compiling all of this information. And genealogy is one of those things that's really kind of important for family histories. Um, and it's one of those things we don't think about a lot because if somebody doesn't do it, well then it kind of gets lost. It gets lost to history. Um, we forget who is who and who's connected to who and where people lived and who they were and their birthdays and all those kinds of things. And when you think about the history, not just history in general, but history of families, it seems like a long time, any one generation of family members. And it feels recent to us, but really history washes away very fast, very quickly. And so to trace the history of genealogy can help anybody figure out where they came from, but if you were to think about your own individual families, you'll understand that history is really short, especially family history. And if it were for people like Bonnie, who traced family histories not only for her own family, but for other people, that history would disappear very quickly. Now, all of us can remember our parents, right? Or at least the vast majority of us. We can remember their faces. We can remember their mannerisms. We can remember things about them and things that they said. And of course, for you, Terry and Kathy, you can remember Bonnie, her face, the things that she would say as if it were just yesterday. Now, if you go a step further, so we go back one generation to our grandparents. Now, we may still have many memories, right? Many of her uh, grandchildren will remember her at least a little bit or partially, and many of us do. But as time goes by, you go back an even further generation, it gets harder still, right? So if we go back and think about our great-grandparents, well, that's a little bit harder to remember. Now, in my life, I can remember my great-grandparents, my Mima and Poppy, when I was a little kid, and I have small memories, but as time goes by, those memories get smaller and shorter. And then if we were to go even a step further, Think about that generation for people who would remember their great, great grandparents. There's not very many people that would be in that situation. A very small percentage of people even knew or saw their great grandparents. When you think about generations, they pass away quickly, quicker than we would like and that we would care to admit. Our memories fade even within a few generations. It's sad because, of course, we want to hold on to memories of loved ones as long as possible, as best we can. But no matter how hard we try, we will eventually become a name in a book, a birth date recorded somewhere, a small history maybe of where we lived, and maybe a few photos. Our lives and all generations eventually pass away. We hold on to it as much as we can, but we cannot stop the passage of time. It keeps rolling on. Now, the psalm I chose uh, today for, from Psalm 103, David talks a little bit about this. He says, As for man, his days are like grass. He flourishes like a flower of the field, for the wind passes over it, and it is gone. Today, that reality is right before our eyes. The generations do pass away, like the grass and the flowers of the field. Now, for us, we think about some lives, and they seem to have lasted a really long time. And Bonnie's life is long, especially 
my life, which is really short right now, and we are reminded that life is fragile, no matter how long it may seem to us, and we have memories, but even our memories cannot be kept alive for very long. And David is reflecting on this reality. He writes that in the psalm. He understands this, and we have to deal with that today, that we remember our sister Bonnie, our sister in Christ, that even she is going to join the many generations before her, the people that she sought to remember and to record in her genealogies. That's what this psalm is about, the generations of history, and now Bonnie is joining all of them. Now, knowing this doesn't make death any easier, because death isn't natural. Death is not part of God's plan. No matter how much we see death, no matter how much we are confronted by it, death is not a natural part of God's created world. Jesus never desired or intended for us to die. He wanted us to live. And not just live for a while, or for a generation, or for two, or for three, but forever. But sin has entered our world and has broken it down, and has also broken down our bodies to the point where they cannot last forever. And just because we know that doesn't mean that death is any less miserable than it was before. It's miserable because it takes the life of precious people people we love, people that we care for, and more importantly, people that Jesus loves, too. Yes, our memories are short. They only last as long as we do, maybe a generation or two, maybe three or even four. But after that, we blow away into the genealogical book. But Bonnie saw genealogy as still an important part of our history. Regardless of that truth, regardless of whether our memories fade, she still thought it was, it was important. Why? Why did she care so much about this? Well, for Bonnie and for those of us who know Jesus, we see the memory of families differently. That's because it's not about us remembering loved ones. It's about God remembering us. You see, Jesus sees us and remembers us, not like we remember each other. And David reminds us of this. He says, for as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is his steadfast love toward those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far does he remove our transgressions from us. As a father shows compassion on his children, so the Lord shows compassion to those who fear him. For he knows our frame. He remembers. He remembers us. You see, Jesus knows us, and he knows Bonnie, and he knows you. David tells us that God doesn't just remember us but that his memory cuts through sin and death and darkness and pain, he's able to overcome all of these things. Yes, Bonnie has left this earthly place, but Jesus remembers her, even now. He knows her frame and he knows her life, and she is precious to him. And his memory of Bonnie is not like ours that fades within a generation. You know, his memory brings eternal life, which is more important than anything. Bonnie knew that life was precious, which is why she spent so much time recording the lives of so many individuals that many had forgotten, because she knew that Jesus loved them and her, even those people who have left generations before. David saw, and Bonnie did too, that God is our Father, meaning he sees us as his children, and he remembers us not just for a day, not just for a generation, and not even for three or four, but for all time. He knows them, he knows her, and he knows you. And he has written our names in the book of life. Bonnie is a, and still is, a follower and baptized child of God. And she knew that her story was not just for one moment or for one generation, but that her Lord remembered her for all time. The Lord remembers us, and the way he does it is so profound and beautiful, which is why we tell the story every year as a church, that Jesus came to this earth in the flesh as a human, and he came to this earth so that he could share with us his love. He shared his word, his love, and he tried to put the world back together. But finally, it all turned out that they put him to death. As Jesus said, he's the good shepherd who laid down his life for the sheep to save people like us, like you and me and like Bonnie, so that we would know that even though he died on Easter, he rose from the dead, and so we will too. Jesus is our Savior 
came into the valley of the shadow of death so that we would know that we would not be snatched out of his hand, but to know that he remembers us, even in the darkest places. Our good shepherd has laid down his life for the sheep. He has taken away sin and death, and we remember that Jesus remembers us. And his memory is not like ours. It's not short. It's not for only a moment, but it's for all time. If you remember, when Jesus dies on the cross, there was one man who hung next to him on the cross, and his only request for Jesus was that he would remember him. He said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus did. He said, today you will be with me in paradise. Brothers and sisters, Jesus remembers you. He remembers us. He has placed us not just into a book of genealogies that will pass and be forgotten or just placed on a shelf. He places us into his family and his kingdom that will last forever. Bonnie knew this, and I know that she prays that all of us would look to that same Jesus who made a promise to her and to you your name was sealed into the book of life. So let's look with hope. Hope toward the future that has been laid out not only for Bonnie, but for all of us, where this life will not be the end, but just the beginning of God's eternal kingdom, where our memories will no longer have to be remembered at all, because we will live again forever with him. A new creation is coming, brothers and sisters. A new creation with Jesus, with Bonnie, and with you. In Jesus' name. Now may the peace of God which surpasses all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus until life everlasting. Amen. At this time, would you please stand as we come before our Lord in prayer. Let us pray to the Lord our God and Father who raised Jesus from the dead. Almighty God, you have knit your chosen people together into one communion in the mystical body of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Give to your whole church in heaven and on earth your light and peace, Lord, and your mercy. Hear our prayer. Grant that all who have been baptized into Christ's death and resurrection may die to sin and rise to newness of life, and so pass with him through the gate of death and the grave to our joyful resurrection. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Grant that all who have been nourished by the holy body and blood of your Son may be raised to immortality and incorruption, to be seated with him at your heavenly banquet. Lord, in your mercy. Give to the family of Bonnie Burns and to all who mourn comfort in their grief and assure confidence in your loving care that casting all their sorrow on you, they may know the consolation of your love. Lord, in your mercy, give courage and faith to the bereaved that within the communion of your church, they may have strength to meet the days ahead in the assurance of a holy and certain hope and in the joyful expectation of eternal life with those they love who have departed in the faith. Lord, in your mercy, Help us, we pray, in the midst of things we cannot understand, to believe and to find comfort in the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Receive our thanks for Bonnie and for all the blessings you bestowed on her in this earthly life. Bring us at last to our heavenly home, that with her we may see you face to face in the joys of paradise. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O God of all grace, you sent your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, to bring life and immortality to light. We give you thanks that by his death, he destroyed the power of death, and by his resurrection, he opened the kingdom of heaven to all believers. Strengthen us in the confidence that because he lives, we shall live also, and that neither death nor life, nor things present or things to come, will be able to separate us from your love, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Taught by our Lord and trusting his promises, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me will live, even though he dies. And whoever lives and believes in me will never die. Lord, now you let your servant go in peace. Your word has been fulfilled. My own eyes have seen the salvation which you have prepared in the sight of every people. A light to reveal you to the nations and the glory of your people Israel. 
Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. I am the resurrection and the life, says the Lord. He who believes in me will live, even though he dies, and whoever lives and believes in me will never die. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Let us go forth in peace in the name of the Lord.